Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Psychic Diaries. I'm one of your hosts, Michael Lamport, producer and narrator of the series Rescue Mediums, and my co-host, Jackie Dennison, who is the host and a renowned psychic medium, uh, is my co-host, as I just said. And we're lucky enough today to have back on our show uh, Marianne Kennedy, who uh, has been on our show before, some of you will remember, she is a she's one of Canada's top uh, mediums, uh, and she is an author, and uh, she is the founder of the School of Mediumship and Spiritual Studies, and uh, she's written a new book apparently, which we're going to try to find out about. Anyway, uh, welcome, Marianne. Thank you both for having me. I'm so excited today. So we're, we're excited too. So uh, please, why don't we start with what the new book's about? Because you've written sure. so many. Yeah, well, this is my second published book. So um, this book is called Advanced Mediumship, A Masterful Guide for the Practicing Medium. And uh, my publisher is Library Tales Publishing, and they're based out of New York, New York. And they published my first book, and they're also wonderful publishers who have taken on my second book as well. And so Great. it was just released uh, a few days ago. Um, I think three days ago. Um, and so we've done a really, um, I think, great job of uh, sending the message out. And we're still doing that about what the book is about. And so I guess to talk about book two, I really have to start just a little bit with book one. And so my first book is called How to Become a Medium. And it's a step-by-step -step guide to connecting with the other side. And so it's really geared toward those who are first sort of making contact with the spirit world or, or interested in it, even if you haven't yet. And I wrote that book sort of as, a, as, as it says, a, a guide. Um, and so it's sort of processed out. It's a scaffolded <clears throat> approach to learning and connecting with the spirit world. And I think that that book was really useful at the time. I wrote it about eight or nine years ago. Now it was published, it was released in 2015. So I guess that was eight years ago. So I, I wrote it about nine years ago or so. And um, I had, it was to great review. Um, I teach a lot of students in mediumship, um, not just through the book, but through classes and workshops and special mm -hmm. events, et cetera. Um, and what I found was uh, over the last eight years or so, that we needed to really do a follow up to book one, um, because it was really, you know, how to become a medium is sort of a, a beginner's guide to, to mediumship and spirit communication. And so we've gone sort of all the way to the the, the, the sort of two steps forward, if, if I could call it that to advanced mediumship with the idea that in between reading book one, and reading book two, that you've done practice in between. Why? Yeah, which is uh, so essential, right? And Jackie will know for sure this, that we have lots of folks that, you know, just sort of dabble in mediumship, maybe take a couple of a month course and, you know, or spend six weeks learning something and then, you know, <clears throat> sort of like hang the shingle and <laughs> become a professional medium out of that. And, and, and it doesn't really work like that. I mean, we have to develop yeah. beyond sort of the initial stages, don't we? So I thought that uh, the new book wasn't going to be released till October. So I'm really thrilled to hear that uh, this has now been released. Now, is this uh, is this just in um, uh, America or Canada, like North America, that this has been released, or is that available anywhere in the world? Um, I know that in, in North America, it's available at all major book retailers right now. Um, I know yeah. that book one is also available in the UK. So I, I, I would have to double check, but I'm pretty sure that we're distributed worldwide. Um, book number one, I've received, you know, emails and correspondence from people all over the world. So I think it's available oh, wow. uh, worldwide, but it's something I would have to check on for book two yet to come. Yeah. You said that you felt writing the book is because you needed a follow-up. So what in your mind then is the difference between sort of exploring like through book one, becoming a medium and then advanced mediumship? Like what is that leap? What is, what is the curve or the arc? It's a great question. So, you know, book two advanced mediumship is written for, um, student mediums or new professional mediums who are either ready to make the launch professionally speaking. And, and when you make the, the, the sort of leap into professional mediumship, there's a standard 
of ability that has to go along with that. And that standard typically is going to relate to your level of accuracy. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to relate to the power in your messages. It's going to relate to your ability to hold the power with spirit for a lengthened period of time and not just, you know, 15 or 20 minutes or something like that. Um, and so the, the follow-up is, is, um, you know, that, not that beyond that initial introduction to spirit people communication um, i talk specifically about the processes of mediumship stepping into a deeper level being clearer in the sort of input or the receivership of spirit information and then being clearer developing further in the ability to translate that information and then of course the final part of that is the output or the delivery of the information and so i've really sort of anatomized the process of mediumship and i and i've always done that but i've been able to do that in this book, um, sort of at a higher level for those in a deeper practice, for those who can sit for an hour and, you know, hold a 90 plus percent accuracy for the entirety of that period in terms of validation and information that, you know, really represents a spirit person. And, uh, you know, the other parts of the book talk I talk about in the book are, um, well, a number of things, you know, one of the chapters I talk about is how to do platform mediumship, which as you know, mm -hmm. Jackie, the internal process of the medium is the same, but the way that we deliver might be a little bit different Bye. than how we do in a private sitting. It's, it's quite different, mm -hmm. actually. And that sort of difference in technique matters. There are also, um, you know, more advanced techniques that, you know, as a professional, you ought to be able to do as a medium. Um, that's a little bit different from a beginner or an intermediate or just a, a student medium. You know, those might be examples of that might be, you know, we all know that you can bring a spirit person through that may not be at the top of the list of who your sitter yeah. or your client wants to hear from. As a professional, you need to be able to navigate to another spirit person and not just and only stick with the person that presents to you. They have come for a reason. And we will represent mm -hmm. them to um, whatever, you know, uh, level or degree of information that we feel is necessary at the time. But, you know, by no means should we have to only stay with that person. We need to be able to move on to others. So being able to communicate with either more than one spirit at one time or by choice, migrate from one to another. So that's important. I, um, I understand that. So but as a lay person, because unlike both of you, I'm not a medium, sadly. Um, but how do you uh, how do you navigate through uh, the imposters? Uh, not on, on our planet, but media that but, but spirit that are saying like, yeah, hey, yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm Marianne or Michael or Jackie's long lost brother. I know I really am. And how do you navigate and filter that as a media? That is. That is such an excellent question. And I actually talk about this in the book. I talk about it a lot that a singular piece of information is not enough to illustrate a spirit person. You cannot say to someone, even if you don't know anything about them, which typically is the case, you know, when we sit with clients, it's not enough to say to someone, I have your mother here. Mm -hmm. That's not enough. It's not even enough to say, I have a woman here whose name is Mary. And she feels like a maternal energy. And the person you're reading for says, hey, that's my mom's name and she's passed. That singular piece of information is not enough to illustrate a spirit person. You have to present a body of work or a body of evidence and points of validation that illustrate someone. I've seen it hundreds of times, if not thousands of times in you know development circles with student mediums where they may begin with a really powerful piece of information, very, very accurate, very specific, a name, for example. And it resonates so deeply with the person that's being read for. Only then to be followed up in a few minutes with a series of information pieces that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. And suddenly that initial piece of information that seems so validating and so concrete and so for sure um, isn't anymore. And that's it's a great way to show that you know a singular piece of information is not enough. And so when we talk about imposters, well, there's two ways I can talk about that. In a sort of sacred process of sitting with someone for a mediumship reading, we tend to not have interlopers that don't belong to the person that you're reading for. Mm -hmm. That definitely happens, you know, if we're doing psychic investigating or energy clearing work or spirit releasement work, that certainly can happen. It's a little bit of a different dynamic, a little bit of a ener different energy setting in a private mediumship reading. But even in that case, how would we address that? Well, as I say, a singular piece of information is not enough. If you can demonstrate 
beyond statistical probability of guessing at everything, then you've done a good job of illustrating that spirit person and the mm -hmm. spirit person has done a really good job of demonstrating themselves through you and then you communicate for them. Yeah, you know, it's uh, really interesting um, how you um, uh, how, how you you're talking about um, uh, the spirit energy coming forward who don't really resonate with uh, the person that's there. But you also added to that, Marianne, and I totally uh, understand that is that that person may have come forward for a specific reason there may be a specific reason why they want to maybe their their best friend has just lost her mother and and it's like i'm just popping in you i'm not going to stay i just want you know can you let barbara know that sheila's got there okay you know and it could just be that kind of interloper that that we can experience um i tell you what's uh, interesting though um as well because um a lot of mediums or some mediums can physically see spirit. I don't. When I'm doing spirit rescue work, it's a different vibration, as you know. And so I work in a completely different way when I'm working like that. But if I'm doing a reading for someone, I couldn't tell you what their loved one looks like in spirit. I couldn't describe them. I couldn't say, oh, this man, uh, I've got this man here. He uh, was a very tall man. Um, he's He's got, you know... Uh, a blonde hair and blue eyes. I can't describe him like that. What I can describe is that person's personality because it's the personality that I work with. And I think a lot of mediums are, or budding mediums are under the impression when they're learning that you have to physically see someone or you have to be able to describe what they look like. And I know a lot of the spiritualist churches when they are teaching mediumship is you must have this. You must be able to describe somebody. And then, you know, you, I, I couldn't. I couldn't describe somebody. But, you know, I've not done a bad job of being a medium. I've been doing this a long, long time. And it's never stopped me from passing messages on. Because every medium works differently, as you know. And so that's great that you're covering all aspects of that in your book. You know, platform mediumship is one thing. Rescue mediumship is something else. Personal readings are something else, and we all work differently. It's almost like you read the book already, Jackie, because you're talking <laughs> I, about I intend to. You're talking I intend about, to. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. You're talking exactly um, about things that I speak about, specifically about not seeing spirit people. Um, I have so many students I've worked with over the years, even some who have gone into professional work who never once in their life saw an image of what a spirit person looked like here in the physical world. No sense of it, none at all. And I do talk about how unnecessary that is. It's but one aspect that you could bring up in terms of validation. Um, and so you are, you are so on point that new mediums often get hung up on the fact that they may not be able to see anything and it really doesn't matter um so you're you're absolutely right that we all work very very differently and so i talk a lot in the book about not comparing yourself to not only where other folks are at in their own development but how they perceive and receive spirit because it will be so different person to person and even still um going further to talk about how we evolve i remember you know as an as a student medium i used to see a lot I, I used to see what spirit looked like, not, um, and it was so specific, it was always around their age of passing, where I had colleagues that would often have spirit present at an earlier, or younger age, where they may have felt differently. Um, I always, it was so reliable that they always presented to me, you know, from the shoulders up, what they looked like near to their passing from the physical world. And over the years, you know, now I barely see anything about a physical description. We evolve, we change, and and I may see an entire image. I may see nothing at all, and I'll only talk about, I understand their essence through their personality, through those characteristics. I may see an image of one aspect of, of what they looked like when they were here. But most importantly, what I talk about in the book is that spirit, in fact, looks like nothing right? They have departed from the physical world. They've departed the physical body. They don't carry that with them. They may have some level of identification with what that body was, depending on where they are and their progression in the spirit world. But, you know, mm -hmm. spirit people don't have voice boxes. They don't have legs. They don't walk. You know, we may perceive them that way as mediums because we do perceive energy and vibrational information in different ways, each of us. 
But when you really understand that spirit is essence without form, you can get over this hang up that you may not see anything in terms of what they looked like when they were here. Yeah, that's a great explanation. Yeah, absolutely. I, I also love when you were talking about um, that you cover in the book about how to present information, because that is so important, isn't it? And I think that's a question that that I have certainly been asked by students. It's like, I've got this information, but I'm not sure. Should I say that? Or how should I say that? So that is great that you are covering that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's, you know, there's always a bit of a, a bit of a rule that when you're a student medium, depending on, you know, community that you're taught by, the, the rule, and I certainly had it as a part of my early learning, which I've also evolved out of through my own, you know, practice and life with spirit, um, is that you must give everything that you get. Okay, that's usually this cardinal rule in mediumship. If you get it, you must mm -hmm. give it. But, you know, there are, there are zero absolutes in mediumship. And so there is no cardinal rule. You know, I talk in the book about, and I like to give examples. I think that anecdotal expressions are important for people to understand concepts. You know, and mm -hmm. so I, in the book, I think one of the examples I give related to this exact, this very thing, Jackie, um, is I remember in a, in a reading a number of years ago, uh, a spirit person had shown me quite graphically what their departure looked like. And it was, it was a, a homicide situation and it was very, very traumatic and very graphic. And, you know, I often wonder sometimes if, you know, you know, why sometimes do we have an understanding of what a departure was and other times it's a graphical presentation of it. Yeah. Every, but, but part of that is also that spirit people, just like us who are living and animated, we all communicate differently and different parts of different circumstances are, are important to you. And, other, and those parts may not be important to right. me, but they're important to someone else. So they communicate very differently, but it was very clear to me, you know, through the process of my life and my experience with spirit that, you know, if there was ever going to be a cardinal rule, if there ever was going to be one, it would have to be something like you may not re-traumatize someone in a mediumship reading by explicitly or very graphically demonstrating or expressing what spirit showed or expressed to you for what purpose you know we can describe the essence of what was submitted to us from spirit without re-traumatizing someone and I think that that's really important I think it's important to understand that you have a duty of care as a medium especially when you're working with folks who are vulnerable in loss and in grief to not have them suffer through their sitting with you and so there are ways to be able to truthfully describe the information because that's what you're supposed to do, uh, but do so in a way that you aren't hurting someone in the process. And I think that that's really important. And then if I could just add to that, there are differences too, as, as you'll know, Jackie, um, you know, if you're delivering a message that includes vulnerability of the, the person you're reading for or of a family member or even the person in spirit, you know, you may feel throughout the course of a private sitting that it's appropriate, it's not exposing or making someone feel any more vulnerable in bringing up this information. Take example, something like a drug overdose or a family issues or an abusive yeah. situation. Um, you may feel because there is no audience that it's safe based on the course of your reading to talk about these things because spirit wants to. And there were indicators along the way that it was okay. But you know, you could have the exact same spirit person and the exact same client sitting in an audience and the same information comes up. And then is it okay to speak about those same things with an audience in front of you? I say that it's not. I say we say to spirit, can you we speak about something else so that I don't make someone overly vulnerable here? I don't want to cause harm to someone who's here. So these are all the yeah. things that folks, you know, you tend to not think about until you've had years and years in this work. And then you've experienced all of these things in a good way and in a bad way. And then you figure out how to present it to someone who's reading your book so that they can avoid falling in some of those pitfalls or causing harm to someone along the way. Well, you, you, you yeah. said earlier though, Marianne, which, which I found interesting is that you said that it's important not to, it, it, if spirit gives you information, you have to give it to the re recipient. But now are you suggesting that sometimes that has to be censored that the medium should sort of say, okay, I have all this information, but I'm not going to give it all to you because it might hurt you. Is that 
Right. So what so what I what I had mentioned earlier was that there typically is this rule in with learning mediums that they learn from different teachers and mentors and community communities along the way that you always give what you get. I didn't say that that's my philosophy. So and and it's not and it's not. Um, you know, it it is when there's no possibility of harm. When there's no possibility of harm. Yeah. How long did it take you to write this book? Oh, it's a great question. I had I had started its first um, iteration, I guess I'll call it, in about 2018. Um, mm-hmm. wow. <laughs> it's about five years after, you know, the publishing of my first book, I was, you know, ready to put some of the ideas and thoughts and teachings and opportunities down on paper. Um, but even then, you know, I, 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 I let it go and then revisited and revised and spent another number of years going back to it. Um, you know, I've talked about it before, you know, my day job isn't a writer, so I don't sit and, and write books. I sit and work with spirit and with clients every day. And so um, I write in my off time. That's what I do, whether I'm writing articles for publishing or whether I'm writing my, you know, one of my two books, I do it in my off time. And, and um, usually in the evenings, I have a family and I have two young kids. And so I do those things when I, when all of my, you know, um, open for business signs are off, everything is closed, and then I'm ready to write. (laughs) Do you ever find time for you? (laughs) Absolutely, I do. And I actually, it's a great, it's a great little segue, because I talk about this in the book as well. I do, I very intentionally put white space in my calendar where there is nothing. Um, And that's Mm -hmm. very important. I talk in the book about um, you know, when you work with spirit and you work with folks who often here in the physical world who are suffering, um, you can burn out really easily. Right. And and if you've done this for any appreciable length of time, I think to varying degrees, we all have. And then we learn mm-hmm. something from that and then we revise life. Um, and so and, and, you know, and especially because my book is geared for those who are in advanced mediumship or ready to go into professional practice. You know, no matter what the venture is, when something is new for us and we're passionate about it, we put a lot of time. We put a lot of energy and a lot of focus into it. And sometimes we can sort of tip the scales a little bit and then we can stay in that unbalanced state of being really invested in, you know, your spiritual practice or your spiritual business or whatever that's going to look like for you. Um, And so I talk in the book about how to take care of your own personal energy, how important that is, how as mediums, we can be bogged down by the sort of lower energy material of, um, you know, experiences that we learn about along the way. It's sort of like vicarious memories. They're not real. They're not ours, but we hear mm. of them through spirit right. people or through the people that we're reading for through of trauma, of grief, of loss, of tragedy. And that mm. is like every day of our working lives. And so that material, energetically speaking and mentally speaking, can be very, very heavy. And it's important to be able to clear to cleanse, to neutralize, to heal yourself. Um, And it's important to find strategies as you become a professional and do this work, you know, all the time that you develop part of your practice of life to take care of yourself, both energetically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, all of it. Yeah, makes total sense. Total sense. So um, with... Uh, regards to uh, the book now being available, are you doing any workshops um, that will uh, help you to promote part of, uh, you know, what you go through in your book? Are you doing workshops and tours? Are yeah, you coming so to England, have, Marianne? Um... <laughs> are you coming to England? <gasps> oh, I'd love it. To... <laughs> We're actually supposed to be heading to Scotland this summer, but I don't know if that's going to, that's a 2020 trip that was canceled uh, because of COVID that hopefully is, is resurrecting, but I'd love to make it to England. Absolutely. Um, I do have, um, I teach courses online sort of virtually. um, And also I have study at, on your, at your own pace, study at home programs happening. Um, We are getting back to in-person events. There's a, we have a sold date, sold out book signing and uh, fundraiser platform event that I'm doing. Um, in April, um, we um, are working on sort of in-person opportunities. Um, but yes, we do have some things in the works. Um, I, all, I, I teach advanced mediumship as a weekend workshop for folks as well. Um, mm. And so I think we'll have a late spring date for that coming. At the end of the video, we'll uh, put your website there so they can go to your website and uh, take a look. 
uh, to see what um, events you have coming up and you know if they want to sign up for any of your your online workshops as well uh, that all the details will be there on your website won't they wonderful i, I was just wondering where is your uh, in-person uh, book signing thing going to be it's in georgetown ontario in canada yeah i know georgetown yeah okay good yeah yes but i'm doing a fundraiser a couple of nights um, <laughs> Yes, that that is true. Um, this fundraiser is at the Georgetown Golf Club. Um, yeah. And it's a it's a wonderful fundraiser. Um, there are um, a couple of families who are clients and also friends and students of mine over the years um, who uh, have a resiliency scholarship in honor of their uh, son and, and daughter who both passed tragically in a kayaking accident in the area. And mm -hmm. I think this is our fourth year doing this. And of course, during COVID, there were two years we couldn't do it. One of the years we did virtually. And so this is our first time back in person. Um, wow. And it's a wonderful event. And it, it was sold out in 48 hours, because it's so well received and so needed for people to connect again, you know, especially in person. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I, I, I hope it goes well. And thank you so much for coming on our show again. And uh, like Jackie says, if you do go over to Scotland, you should whip down to England and you two should meet up for a glass of wine at a local pub. Oh, yes. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> that would be thank wonderful. You so let me know and we'll meet halfway between Scotland and England. <laughs> That's a deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Wishing you all the very, very best for everything. And we will have you back on again when you are about to launch your third book. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. I'll mark those words. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much, Marianne. Thank you, guys.